Hello folks. So in this video, we are going to discuss about outliers. Uh, that is most common causes of outliers on the data set. How to detect uh, these outliers and uh, thereafter how to handle them. So folks, this is Nitin uh, who is determined to uh, democratize the artificial intelligence, uh, big data, Hadoop and cloud computing to the world. And with this aim, I will be uh, creating uh, the associated content and going to publish the same periodically and made it available for you. So folks, you can subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates regarding hottest technologies of 21st century. So what exactly are the outliers? Uh, that is a question which comes to our mind, you know. Well, outliers are extreme values that deviate from other observations or data. They may indicate uh, variability in measurement, experiments, errors, or, you know, uh, novelty. So, in other words, uh, the, uh, an outlier is an observation uh, that diverges from uh, overall uh, pattern on a sample. Okay, so uh, outlier can all, uh, you know, can also come in different flavors. Depending on the environment, point out, uh, you know, there are point outliers, contextual outliers, or uh, collective outliers, you know. So, point, point outliers are single data points that lay far from the rest of the distribution, right? And uh, as far as con contextual uh, outliers are concerned, uh, these can be, uh, you know, kind of noise in the data, such as punctuation symbols when, you know, realizing text analysis or background noise signals. Uh, when doing speech recognition, etc. When uh, then collective outliers can be subset of novelties in data such as signal uh, that may indicate the discovery of new phenomena. Okay. So most common uh, causes of outliers. So what are the some of the most common causes of outliers on a data set? Well, the number one is data entry errors, of course, uh, which are kind of you know human errors. Then in the second, uh, secondly, it comes measurement errors, which are kind of instrument errors. So if there is some calibration problem in any instrument, then those can be, uh, you know, uh, counted as measurement errors. Then we have experimental errors, uh, which are kind of, you know, data extraction or experiment planning or, uh, you know, executing errors. Then fourthly, we have intentional, so like dummy outliers made to test detection uh, methods, etc. Then the fifth one is uh, data processing errors, of course, uh, so data manipulation or data set uh, unintended mutations, etc. Then we have uh, sampling errors, of course, uh, so extracting or mixing data from wrong or various sources. And lastly, there are some natural errors. So those are exactly not exactly an error. These are novelties in the. Uh, so in the process of producing, collecting, processing, and analyzing data, outliers can come from any source and hide in you know many dimensions. So those that are not uh, a product of an error are called novelties. Okay. And we will be for this particular video, we will be using a data set called Boston housing data set for, uh, you know, uh, which can be used for detecting outliers. So, uh, the you know, this kind of uh, data set can be extracted from uh, the data set library, which uh, comes with Python. I will give uh, exact details uh, pretty shortly. So uh, if you want, I can show you uh, the link to, uh, to this particular uh, data set, but uh, we will be using the data set library to extract the data and creating a, a data frame out of this. So this is the data set you can see here. So this, this particular is the link. I will be providing this in a description section. So this is the link of the data set, Boston housing data set. And you can see that they, uh, these are uh, the variables or the columns associated with this particular uh, data set. So CRIM crime is uh, per capita crime rate by town. ZN is the column which depicts the proportion of residential land zones for lots over 25,000 square feet etc so the, there are uh, around about uh, 14 columns or attributes in this particular data set and if you want to get more details you can very well uh, go through this link to get them 
details regarding this data set so um uh, now we will uh, we can make use of this uh, scikit learns uh, data set module to import or load the data set as i told you earlier so it's an inbuilt uh, data set of scikit learn library and if you want to get more details uh, on this uh, loading data set from scikit learn library then you can watch one of my video uh, which has the title load data using mysql csv file and scikit learn so let's get uh, this uh, data set loaded first and then uh, we'll be following the subsequent steps later on okay so let's open our jupyter notebook uh, here uh, in the outlier detection detection section we can uh, type from sklearn dot data sets import boston or import load boston okay and then after that what we can do is we can basically uh, uh, include this this is a kind of a class so load bo load underscore boston is a class and we can uh, create a variable which can uh, contain the object of this class okay so boston equals to uh, load boston and then once this is done we'll explore the uh, the you know uh, the observations uh, how many observations are there in this data set and how many columns are there so kind of uh, we, we can see the shape of this particular uh, data set okay and the way we do it is uh, we can basically type print boston dot data dot shape this is one thing and then after that uh, we can you know print the feature names as well basically the names of the columns of uh, this particular uh, data set we can print those as well and the command to print those are boston dot feature and then feature underscore names okay so let's run this cell mm. looks like some issue here okay so there is a typo here so let's read on this cell again so you can see the first print command it is actually showing that there are 506 rows or observation in this data set and there are 13 columns as such in it okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 so there are 13 columns which we have printed using this particular command okay so uh, in order to convert uh, this uh, particular uh, now into a, uh, you know convert this into a, a pandas data frame we need to use uh, you know the data frame method of pandas and pass the boston dot data okay so what we will essentially do here is so what we'll do is we'll type boston which is uh, the name of our data frame okay and here we will pass pd dot data frame and then boston dot data okay and this this particular statement will create a data frame out of it okay and now if you want to print uh, some of the rows of this uh, data set then we can do so by using the head uh, clause okay so let's type boston dot head and you will be able to see first few rows of this data set so here you can see that right and this here CRIM uh, corresponds to the index value, index column value 0. ZN is corresponding to index column value 1. INDUS is corresponding to index value 2 and so on. Okay. All right. Let me scroll down a bit. All right. So uh, we have uh, seen that this is the data basically associated with Boston data housing data set. Now outliers can be of two kinds. 
वन इज यूनिवेरिएट एंड अनदर वन इज मल्टीवेरिएट सो यूनिवेरिएट आउटलायर्स कैन बी फाउंड वन लुकिंग एट अ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वैल्यूज इन सिंगल फीचर स्पेस और राइट एंड मल्टीवेरिएट आउटलायर्स कैन बी फाउंड इन एन डायमेंशनल स्पेस दैट इज ऑफ एन फीचर्स ओके सो लुकिंग एट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन एन डायमेंशनल स्पेस कैन बी वेरी uh difficult for human brain and that is why we need to train a model to do it for us okay and that we are going to see uh, shortly so in order to keep uh, things very simple uh we will start with basic method of detecting outliers and slowly will we will move on to the uh, advanced methods right the first method we are going to cover is using box plot which is one of the visualization method uh and uh, now the question comes what is a box plot so a box plot is a method for graphically uh, depicting groups of numerical data through their quartiles okay and box plot may also have lines extending uh, vertically from the box boxes and those are called whiskers indicating variability uh, outside the upper and lower quartiles hence the terms box and whisker plot and uh, box and whisker uh, you know diagram uh we can say the same thing right so outliers may be plotted uh, as individual point so if there is an outlier it will be plotted as a point in box plot but other population will uh, will be grouped together and display as boxes so let's try and see it ourselves okay that is something which i am going to cover uh, so for this uh, we will be using um, seaborn library and seaborn is a library for making statistical uh, graphics in python uh, this library is built on top of matplotlib and uh, closely integrated with the uh, pandas data structure so let's do it so in order to create these visualization first command which we need to uh, include always include in jupyter notebooks uh, is this one so okay matplotlib online okay so this is the command uh, whenever we want to plot any data in jupyter notebooks and then uh, secondly we will include a command uh, for importing the seaborn library okay and we will be using uh, again uh, the short form of it okay so let's use it so import seaborn uh, as sns and then matplotlib library as well so import uh matplotlib dot py plot as plt and then now we will include uh, the command to uh, provide the box plot visualization okay so we'll type sns dot box plot it's very intuitive uh, so you can see that we have uh, used a short form of uh, the c1 library and then uh, what kind of visualization we need to create we need to create a box plot so we included the box plot here and now for which particular column we need to uh, visualize that we can provide here so uh, let us say i want to include the Uh, or i want to create the box plot for this particular column seventh column which is nothing but tis uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 seventh column okay so, which is dis so i need to create the box plot for this so boston and then the index value of this column okay and when when we press shift enter okay it looks like some error let me check that online oh it should be should be in line not online so press shift enter again okay now you can see the box plot has been created here so folks this particular line vertical line is a lower extreme this is the upper extreme this one is lower quartile which is the 25th percentile this one is upper quartile which is the 75th percentile and this one is the median value okay 
so these are kind of whiskers okay the extreme values are whiskers and this is a box plot okay, box so that's why we call it as a box box and whisker plot okay and you can see here that there are certain outliers here so as i mentioned earlier uh, the values which are uh, not outliers are enclosed within these boundaries okay the upper extreme and lower extreme boundaries uh, and majority of data points are focused in this particular section and these points are outliers okay so this is the way we can find the outliers using visualization techniques right so we can see from the plot that there are three points right uh, as you can see here these three points between 10 and 12 right and these are the outliers i showed you uh, told you uh, as there are not these are not included in box of other observation okay so here we um, analyzed a univariate outlier that is we use dis column only to check the outlier but we can do multivariate outlier analysis uh, as well and uh, just a question so can we do multivariate analysis with box plot well it depends uh, if you have a categorical values then you can use uh, that uh, with any continuous variables and do multivariate outlier analysis okay and as we do not have categorical variables in our uh, boston housing data set we might need to forget about uh, using box plot for multivariate outlier analysis so folks uh, this is it for this video and in order to conclude uh, i would say that we learned about uh, most common uh, causes of outliers on the data set as well as some visual form of outliers uh, outlier detection that is usage of matplotlib and seaborn libraries to detect these outliers and more specifically we used uh, box plot to detect outliers in this video so i will be covering uh, the part two of this uh, topic in the next video okay so uh, here is today's question uh, how often do you use visualization libraries to detect outliers please comment on the uh, comment section below we will definitely like to hear from you and if you are watching this video and you are not already already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button and in case you have already subscribed then click on bell icon to receive the notification whenever i will release new videos okay so thanks for hanging out with us guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching